Thank you to Kelly for entrusting me with her car and generally being an awesome person. What's up fellow drivers? So this week I'm going to be reviewing a 2008 Mini Cooper S and I wanna answer three questions. One, is it fun? Two, is it overpriced? And three, what the heck is a Cooper? All right, so this has the N14 engine. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, which uh, sounds extremely small which it is. This engine is known for burning a bit of oil. Uh, the owner tells me that she puts in a quart uh, fairly often. <laughs> so you gotta stay on top of that. And I imagine that increases and decreases, you know, somewhat based on uh, how old the car is. And uh, this one might have a slight oil leak as well. So if you don't already know, you probably do. The Mini Cooper is a pretty well-known car, uh, but it's a front wheel drive two-door hatchback and it was originally a British brand uh, you might expect it to lose oil based on that alone uh, but nowadays the modern Mini Cooper is actually a German car more or less uh, it's owned by BMW and that's part of the reason why a lot of people think it's kind of overpriced because basically you're paying for a BMW but not actually getting a BMW that being said, this car isn't new. So given that it's a used car, you can find pretty good deals. All right, but let's get into actually testing out the car and uh, seeing how fun it is. I'm up here on a great road. The handling is very light. Definitely uh, not heavy whatsoever. Um, it loads up a little bit. I have to say, it doesn't have a whole lot of feeling, but it is very direct. This is a very short wheelbase car. It's well suited for this particular road. It's got a lot of tight switchbacks, S turns, some are even U turns in here. Let's see how we do on this pull here in the straighter section. Foot to the floor. All right, I gotta break for this turn a little bit. So in this high speed section, it feels composed. It manages the bumps well. Okay, it really starts to pull when you get to like 5,000 RPM. You can feel that turbo pulling a lot more. Um, personally, I find it a little bit difficult to rev match in this car, but I don't think that's anything to do with the car, honestly. I think it's just my preferences because uh, the clutch on this particular car is set to engage pretty high and I'm just not used to it. And so I blip the throttle and I'm trying to let the clutch back in and uh, or out rather and it hasn't engaged yet so usually I'm a little off on the timing. But it revs up easily and it pulls very smooth. I'd say if there was one thing I could say about this car that really surprised me after driving it for a little while is just how smooth it is. Uh, like the power delivery really comes on very smoothly. Um, the handling is very smooth. Everything feels easy and like the car isn't working too hard. At the same time, it doesn't feel numb. Uh, I did mention that there wasn't a whole lot of feeling in the steering, but I've definitely experienced worse and it is direct. Uh, I don't feel like it's sloppy, I just can't really feel the tires. 
All right, we're going uphill here, so now we'll really see what the power is like. In the lower RPMs, it really doesn't have a lot of power, <laughs> uh, which I guess is to be expected. You know, it's a very small turbocharged engine. Uh, but let's see, when you climb up there, yeah, even above four, it has some decent torque, um, and above five is really where you feel the power. All right, that was a much better downshift, getting the hang of it. Yeah, brakes have some good feeling to it. The pedal feels nice and firm. It's fairly easy to modulate. The car is fairly quiet. Uh, inside you do get a little bit of wind noise from the cabin, uh, but nothing too crazy. It's pretty normal for a car like this, I would say. The shifter is nice, I have to say. Um, when I first got in, I was a little wary because it has sort of a weird thing where it's a six speed and the reverse is to the left and up of first gear. But the thing is, there's no uh, like push down to slot it in or thing to pull up or whatever. And I was always really nervous that I was going to go into reverse instead of first. Uh, so that can happen. But when you're actually rowing through the gears and moving, the gearbox feels pretty slick. It slots in easily, and you can definitely tell it kind of uh, notches right into whatever gear it is that you put it into. And you know, the car is pretty confidence inspiring. Like right now, I don't feel mentally strained. I'm able to talk to you guys and uh, drive without an issue. And man, it's just really well suited for these roads. Having a little car like this on these tight twisties feels good. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the practical things because this is kind of a practical car, right? I mean, it's a hatchback. Room up front here is good. Uh, you can scoot the seat back quite far and you could sit somebody very tall up here without any trouble. Uh, same, of course, for the passenger over there. Uh, you might notice that the steering wheel and the seats don't look stock. Uh, the owner of this car also has a Kawasaki Ninja and she likes the theme and wanted to match. So that's what that's about, but they look pretty cool. Anyway, uh, if you look in the back here, it has some uh, decent room for cargo, but not so much for leg room. So let's walk around the car and go to the other side. And I'll show you what I mean. We'll scoot this all the way ahead. All right. So it's a bit of a tight squeeze to get in here. And uh, once I'm in, um, it's actually better than I was expecting. So it has some kind of quirky things you might expect with uh, Mini Cooper. For instance, the recline on the seat is over here on the inside, not on the outside where you typically have it. I love these crazy gauges. Now, honestly, these aren't my style, and uh, it's not really a car that I would probably get just because uh, the styling is like a little too quirky for my taste, but it is fun. I mean, come on, look at the size of that speedometer. <laughs> it's insane. These kind of knobs are fun for the switches. And this roof is super cool. You have like dual sunroofs. You can go over here and look in the hatch. The hatch is pretty small. You can see I have the drone there, some camera bags. Um, you could put your groceries in here without a problem or a backpack. Not a whole lot of room though, unless you lay down the seats and then you definitely have quite a bit of cargo room. Of course, that negates the possibility of having four people in the car. All right, so let's get back to those three questions and try and answer them. Is it overpriced? 
I'm gonna say no. If you're buying it used, this is actually a pretty good deal. Now, of course, depending on the year and mileage, you can see them for a wide variety of price ranges. But you can get decent ones in the five, six, seven thousand dollar range uh, for a Mini Cooper S, which is pretty dang cool, honestly. And now, is it fun? Yes, I would say that this car was surprisingly fun. Uh, you know, I've always thought of the Mini as just kind of like sort of a quirky car and, uh, you know, maybe it's fun. I've actually heard good things about it, but it just didn't fit me personally. But after driving it, I have to say it's been really enjoyable and it's definitely well suited for twisty roads like this. And then there's that all important third question. What the heck is a Cooper? So I looked this up and apparently a Cooper is somebody who makes barrels. So a Mini Cooper is a little person that makes barrels? Only you can prevent forest fires.